Hello everybody, today is day 208. We're again reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 44 through chapter 48. Now, uh, the focus seems to be shifting, uh, thankfully, from the doom and gloom and judgment of God to that of God's faithfulness, his power, his splendor, and his unwavering loyalty to Israel. Now, in chapter 44, God declares Israel, uh, whom I have chosen, and he says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on your descendants, the descendants of Israel. And in fact, this is reflected in the book of Joel and also in the book of Acts, as Peter talks about it in the last days. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Well, God declares in this chapter his absolute sovereignty over all. And he says, I'm the first and I'm the last. There's none before me, nor will there be anybody after me. And, um, and besides me, he says, there is no God. And so he exposes the foolishness of useless, lifeless idols made at the hands of mortal men. And he, uh, and he reemphasized the fact there's no profit in idols that cannot see and cannot hear and uh, are uh, just simply created by the hands of men. And they're, they're, that only deceived hearts would embrace uh, lifeless images that have been fashioned at the hands of man, and um, and and then he's and then he reminds them that God, as God, he says, "I have not forsaken, nor have I forgotten Israel." And uh, and then he says, "Only a deceived heart would embrace an idol and not turn to me." God has not uh, only has he not reemphasized that he hadn't forgotten Israel; he appeals to them to return to him. He appeals to Israel, his people, to once again abandon the idols and the images and the rituals and to return back to worshiping him. Now in chapter 45, God I, uh, makes it very crystal clear, Israel is God's elect. And he's, he makes mention that he, Israel has been named by God himself. And, and yet he says to Israel, his people, you've not known me. You have stood at a distance. You have forsaken me. You have You've run to idols and images, but Israel, he says, shall be saved. And, uh, and, and they're going to look to God, and they're going to be delivered, and they're going to be rescued. And so God is reaffirming this uh, as we read these passages of Scripture that are full of prophetic words of uh, what the outcome of Israel is going to be in the last days. Now, in chapter 46, uh, God raises the issue, who is my equal? And then he says, remember the former things of old, declaring the end from the beginning. And God is affirming, listen, I have spoken it. And he's making reference to, especially of his covenant promise and that he will not lie, cannot lie, that he, he created Israel, his people. He's going to remain loyal to them. Uh, some people have suggested a replacement theology as it pertains to now the church being Israel and that uh, God is done with uh, Abraham and his descendants. But I want you to know that that is very clear from Scripture, especially as we're reading through the book of Isaiah, that God had established uh, Israel, the uh, children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the, um, and, and the tribes, and uh, he's loyal to them. And, he is, and, the, and he's going to restore them in the latter days. Now, in chapter 47... Uh, he said, the Bible speaks about the, uh, the ultimate, makes reference to the ultimate uh, humiliation and destruction of Babylon. Uh, God did indeed use Babylon and uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the kings. He used them for his honor and for his glory. He used them, in fact, to address Israel, his people, to discipline them. And as we read the arrogance and the pride and the ignoring God that is by the Babylonians here, uh, he makes reference to several specific things. They're given, they were given to pleasure, they're, they're trusting in wickedness, their wisdom and knowledge has warped them, uh, evil has consumed them, has come upon them, and yet God says to them, I'm going to bring you down in a day. Uh, d there's going to be swift and sudden destruction without warning, Babylon uh, will be destroyed. And when we read all of these characteristics and these uh, 
um, you know, the nature of Babylon and their wickedness and their evil and their sin and their rebellion and idolatry. Uh, it, we think, I think to myself, it could be America. This, this, could, be, this could be America. And uh, we continue to experience the grace and the mercy of God. Uh, but it could be, couldn't it, when we read this? I'm not saying that's who this is referring to, because it's not. But I'm just saying that when you see the, 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 the nature, the culture, the corruption, it sounds a lot like America. Now, in chapter 48, Israel, uh, the Bible makes it very clear that God has preserved Israel uh, for his glory. God is going to defer his anger. He's not going to cut Israel off. Uh, Israel uh, is, going to, is being tested, will be tested, is going to be refined for his name's sake. He will not give his glory to another. He's emphatic about this. And God will redeem Israel. So I say to you, it's so exciting when you see this, that God, he's true to his word. He cannot lie. We have a crystal clear covenant promise. And this reaffirms to us, we've been grafted in. And uh, we, as Gentiles, have been also rescued. And we are going to provoke the Jew to jealousy. But it's wonderful to know that God is true to what he's promised. He's promised us. But what he has promised in all of scripture to Israel, God will not and he cannot lie.